So what are the drawbacks and issues with microservices architecture? Uh, there are so many advantages and so many attractions, surely it can't all come for free, and no it doesn't. The drawbacks are that we now have a distributed system. We have now, we've just launched in distributed computing with all of the problems that it brings. So developers must implement inter-process communication. Um, that's just, if you, even if you're going vertical communication, suddenly you have inter-process communication. And the applications themselves have to deal with uh, asynchronous uh, communications. You, you, you don't have call and return uh, as you do within a single process. So you, you have to now uh, deal with unreliable um, uh, services. So for example, you might call a microservice and it isn't up. Uh, you don't even know where it is, so you have to you have to go through a broker to find the uh, service. You go call it. Possibly it's not there today, or it hasn't fired up, or it's been taken down, or it's a different version. You have all of those problems to deal with, as well as the problem that a complete transaction may require um, the um, you know multiple microservices, and somehow the coordination of all those microservices must be done. So writing, uh, so the developers have got to figure that out. That's that's the first thing. Uh, testing them gets to be interesting, apparently. And uh, some of the comments are that testing distributed applications is very very tricky. Um, again, I'll, I'll quote uh, Martin Fowler. He's he's of the view that well, look, it's is not. Uh, and just say there's nothing about microservices that it makes testing more difficult than normal testing is when you have to do it properly. And so uh, take your pick. You either have to improve your testing uh, because you're doing something a bit more high performance, or you have to revamp the whole thing because suddenly you're dealing with distributed computing. Either way, your testing is going to have to improve. That can be difficult to create a consistent test environment. That's somebody's comment, and I can understand that. Um, and subtle behaviors. Uh, as with any of these um, collaborating things, you can get uh, subtle behaviors that emerge from the interaction among things. And uh, now we get a whole new series of Heisenbugs. There is significant operational complexity. Um, so it's not just the developers who have to deal with the increased complexity, it is the, the operations team also who have to deal with the uh, operational complexity. And inevitably, uh, you have to deal with um, inconsistent databases. You have, you, suddenly you now have distributed databases and distributed transactions, and you have to deal with the, um, the issues of eventual consistency. So let's go through this. Then um, distributed systems are by their nature a bit more complex than um, uh, monolithic systems. So inter-process calls are slow if you're going across the, the internet. I, mean, I have seen arguments that they are slow um, but within one um, cloud uh, they're, they're not that slow. So. Some arguments are they're slow, others say, look, that's nothing, it's, it's not the big holder, it's serialization and deserialization that's the problem. Um, whichever, you, you now can have the total latency time for a single tra transaction can become quite significant due to the, all the communication that's going on. Microservices must be coordinated at the function level. Now, um, later I think I'll talk about macroservices and microservices. Microservices, um, are they do provide a service, and somebody or something somewhere has to coordinate all these services and uh, get all the timing right, and that's not a trivial task. Asynchronous programming is very hard to get right. Um, I have read somewhere that, uh, I think it was threads, um, don't do it. If you can possibly avoid it, don't do it. Um, now, with microservices, you are dealing with distributed computing, you're dealing with asynchronous computing, you're dealing with having, having to coordinate um, separate processes all over the place. And this is not simple. Testing and debugging becomes equally complex and difficult. I've spoken about that before. But we also have operational complexity. Now, life is not merely 
much, much more complex for the developers, it's for the operators as well. So managing and monitoring multiple services is more demanding than the equivalent monolithic system. Continuous delivery becomes essential. Right? Automation and management tools are still immature and uh, this is um, I'm sure that will catch up in time, but at the moment the comment is that they are immature. Uh, organizations do tend to drift toward the, um, the adage of you build it, you support it, um, because uh, it, it, no, it is possible and there are some good things that come out of that, including that um, if, you, if, if you build it and it's got bugs and you keep getting called up in the middle of the night, you tend to learn how to fix it and make it a fairly resilient application, or you tend to leave. Now, eventual consistency. Um, this can be a problem with um, uh, usability um, because you can you can put in a transaction and you refresh and is not uh, is not updated. And this is because where the data was fed is not where the data is read, um, but. The problem is that maintaining a strong consistency is very, very hard with distributed systems. So everybody tends to drift toward and has to manage eventual consistency. Debugging becomes difficult because when you get around to investigating it, the window of inconsistency has disappeared. So it's difficult to recreate the circumstances that occurred um, when that, that caused or create the circumstances in which the bug occurred. So that becomes quite a uh, quite a problem, and um, I'm sure there will become uh, tools available uh, in time, but at the moment they're not there. So there are some drawbacks to uh, microservices architecture, and they shouldn't be minimised, but nor should they be considered as a showstopper.